this is a sheet bend. And the tails of my knot are both coming out the same side, which is a right-handed sheet bend, the only way you can tie it. This is a left-handed sheet bend. Notice the tails not coming out the same side. Years ago, we did a video where we tested this version and the comments let us know we were not tying the sheet bend correctly. Of course we weren't. According to the King Ashley's Bible of Knots, the ABOC, in Second Opinions chapter 2, verse 1432, it says the left-handed sheet bend is often tied by landsmen and is not so reliable as a knot as 1431, which is the right-handed sheet bend, the one I tied. Well, if he's right, a quarter of the videos I could find showing how to tie the sheet bend are wrong. Including ours, apparently. So, there's only one way to find out. A how not to episode. A bite of rope is just a pinch of rope like this, and this is the working end. So you pinch your bite and you go up that hole and you come around this side where this tail is coming. You go around it so you can come back towards it. And that tail now comes out this side and this tail comes out this side. And that is a right-handed sheep bend. Apparently the only way you should tie this or is it? Another way that you can tie a sheet bend is if you just happen to walk by a bullen with a knife, and then all of a sudden, you have the tail on both sides for a perfect sheet bend. Now, the difference between a bullen is this strand is also getting loaded, not just this strand by itself. People have left comments before about the blind leading the blind, and I just wanna reinforce that by saying, only about a year ago did I learn it was not called a sheep bend because I never saw the word. I never used it. Not, yeah, I don't, a lot of climbers don't use it. I always thought it was sheep bend. And I was like, sounds weird. Okay. It's for um, sheets. Like sails. I don't know how you would tie a sheep <laughs> with that. Now that you know, I'm very confident about this topic. Let's start testing things. Found a really great way to test it. We are going to be pulling with a piston that goes through those two arbors, pulleys and pulls this. But what we are going to do is pull this in a loop. One where it is tied correctly, this tail and this tail are coming out the same side, and this tail and this tail are coming out the opposite side. They will pull evenly, and it's head to head to see which one is going to win. They slipped. They slipped out of frame is what they did, but they did slip. Is that the wrong way? Yep. Oh, that's interesting. So you can see that once it hit, I don't know, about seven-ish kilonewtons, it slipped and then go back up to, oh, we have a cool little feature here that we'll just, uh, then it got up to eight kilonewtons again, drop back down to about four, and then peak at 8.58. Want to do another test to confirm that? Well, you got to do three or it's not science. Let's cut off the damage part and do it again. Well, Bobby's doing that. I want to tell you that the cord is 100% polyester. It's the Cougar cord on HowNotTo.com. And they are six mil and seven mil, slightly different, but the bigger one is the bite, which is what you're supposed to do. Also the tails are six inches on, on both of them and that'll be consistent for these tests. This one's tied right, this one's tied wrong, and I'm just gonna hang on this time. do to try to get the shot for you guys eight yep same thing what happened was this got stuck in the knot and then it slipped down and whiplash me this is a different result that's the same side seems like this orange thing's in the middle now so it's hard to tell <laughs> had a very similar very color. similar one of the cool things and scary things about this knot is that it's easy to untie don't make it look too easy bud i don't want it bad enough yes <laughs> all right so if you take it up to eight it's a knife knot. Here's the tiebreaker, and I'm gonna go 2x for safety. Hey, I didn't get hurt. And that got up to nine kilonewtons. Our winner is Ashley's right, right hand. hand. Let's test uh, a more slippery rope in the same way. So I tied all of these the same with the wrong way and the right hand right way and the have six inch tails, we're gonna do three samples. And it's 75% HMPE, and so it is a much more slippery sheath than the polyester. Ah, that's a tie in my opinion. Damn, that is hot, feel that. It's the left-handed. I don't think it matters. The tail could be off by that much. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, same thing. All right, it doesn't matter. Just so it's clear, in a loop, 18 kilonewtons. When you use the right knot, in that five mil cord. So supposedly this knot is good for different sized ropes, which it's always nice to have a knot in your pocket for different sized ropes. So we are going to go to the extreme for 11 mil down to paracord, which is four mil. Let's find out when it slips. All right, well, that test is over. Did you tie the right kind? Yep, right-handed. <laughs> well, that's over, now what? Let's see if... <laughs> A slightly larger size. I think that size is too small. Clearly. Do you agree? <laughs> Do you put it in the comments below? This is 11 mil Sterling HTP and 5 mil VL. We're seeing some truth to that right versus left handed. Here's the right handed. Left handed slipped at a quite a low force. Tie this here and see how strong this will go. Yeah. Let's see what this correctly tied sheep in ultimately failed. We're gonna go up to six millimeters and find out how big of a diameter difference we can have. The right-handed sheet bin is still intact at 6.46 kilonewtons. The sheet bin slips. It slips even worse when there's a big enough of a size difference. Now, what happens if you didn't take it up to 1,400 pounds of force? What if you cyclically loaded it from very little to one or two K and back and forth. If only there was a machine that would do that. This is the Slack Snap UTM. And with our interface over here, we can choose two kilonewtons, max force. And let's change that to a hundred cycles. Cyclic loading is sometimes so underwhelming. The first tug is probably what shrunk the tail. And after that, it didn't really move much. So let's crank it up a notch from 0.1 KN, so it relaxes, all the way up to 4 KN, and run that for about an hour and see what happens. Wow, yet another underwhelming test. Let's see if our result is different now that we super set the knot. Oh, God. Oh, it broke. Wow. Is that, that's a different result. You just need a $20,000 machine to set all of your... Set your knots with this at the base of every crag. Wow. wow. They both slipped. It's just a matter of time whether or not this one fully slipped. Only if you cyclically load them will they become useful. Well, it still slipped out. I mean, this one got yeah. cyclically loaded 200 times. <laughs> All right, so it just sucks. It just sucks. So is there a world in which you would use the sheet bend? For life-supporting stuff? No way. I haven't used it for life-supporting stuff, but... I do have the Rubmaster 5000, and the problem is the samples only need to be about yay big. Then if you have to tie a knot on both sides, the special ropes we're trying to rub would take twice as much. And the knot would get sucked up into our drum, and so we have used sheet bins there, saving us quite a bit of rope. Now what if there was a way to tie this more securely? That is a double sheet bend, and so we'll repeat a few of these tests to see if that makes any difference. And if we need to, we'll do a triple. Oh, they started to slip, but we got fullish strength. Um, oh, which one won? Left hand. Ooh, left hand. I'm not convinced one's better than another. Not for similar sizes. For larger sizes, we were seeing pretty consistent mm. the right hand being a little better, but I would never use this knot. Well, while he's sheeting all over this knot, I'm looking for a, a problem for my solution. I want to use the sheet bit. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's try the more slippery cord now. That one still slipped, and we can get 18 kilonewtons out of this cord if tied in the right knot. And this one was about to go, and that is so hot I can barely touch it. But what happens if we do a double sheet bend on the different size ropes? Oh, oh, are you, are you unable to make that? Oh. Yes, if you flex it. Yeah, you don't want to have to do that yeah. too many times. Okay. Oh, and now I've got All right. another type of hitch. Maintain tension, noted. Let's throw a triple on here. Oh no, a triple slipping. This is 550 cord, so in a loop, a thousand pounds is about what we expect. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it kind of has welded itself to the rope. 
It's almost like a whipped end. Seven, eight, nine. Oh no, it started to slip. No, we didn't get full strength. Tens a lot though. And they both went right up to the tail. So I feel like that's a tie. We've been testing a bunch of small cords. I just want to do a single sheet bend on a 9.8 dynamic rope and the 11 millimeter static. That's interesting. The left-handed sheet bend won. I wouldn't call that winning right there. We stopped testing things when I'm not curious anymore and I have food coma from dinner. So you could do a backup knot or even a double, like a double barrel knot. barrel knot coming off the backside. But if you did this, you might as well, you might as well just tie a fisherman's knot. But you could say that it was easier to untie like this, even if it did slip. That is easier to untie, but it's weird and bulky and I'm never gonna do that. Are you gonna do that? In case you do, let's test it. Oh God. I was curious if we'd be able to untie this when we're done. There's no untying this. And that bend was even worse for this than the figure eight knot. Everything we broke today, we have at hownotto.com and we have a ton of accessory cords and specialty accessory cords. In case you didn't know that, thanks for watching. Cheers.